Hello everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and this week I'm painting news broadcaster and journalist Jon Snow for Sky Portrait Artist of the Week. So I started out using this System 3 acrylic. This is just conventional acrylic but I've used the fluorescent red, yellow and blue. Combined that with just titanium white to create this background colour on top of some mixed media paper. And then what I've done is taken a mid blue marker by Windsor and Newton. This is a watercolour marker and I've created this loose, reasonably loose, you know, but fairly carefully considered drawing of John. And then I went back over. If you look closely, you can see the mid blue line here. And then this is uh, an indigo line, again, watercolour marker. So now I'm pretty much ready to paint. All right, so I've switched to my interactive acrylics now. I've got burnt umber, cadmium yellow light, ultramarine blue, permanent alizarin crimson and titanium white. And I'm actually going to start this week's portrait in a slightly different way to usual. I've just starting with a three quarter inch flat brush. That bit's, that bit's the normal thing, but I'm just going in with pure titanium white to begin with. I'm just going to pick out some of the key highlights in the hair and then grabbing a fair amount more of that on my brush I'm just going to paint in the brightest parts of the shirt and some of that fluorescent orange that I kind of created with that mix of the three primaries and a little bit of white or quite a bit of white actually some of that is going to show through the titanium white and I'm hoping that's going to kind of create you know, some warmth in the finished painting. So for the most part, I'm, I'm squinting at my reference and simply trying to mimic the patterns that I see on the fabric. So I'm going to go back up to the hair now. I've still got the titanium white on the go. A little touch of the ultramarine blue. So that's given me an off-white now. So now I'm kind of looking at the slightly less bright highlights in the hair. And treating them as, you know, simply patches of colour. Now, you know, uh, an obvious question would be, well, hang on, you know, John doesn't really have blue hair. Why are you painting it blue? Well, part, you know, partly because I feel like it, quite frankly, um, but there are a little there is a little bit of blue reflected light picked up in the hair as well. So um, I try to start fairly simply with my colour descriptions. And then because of that, things work out, you know, often more vibrant than they actually are. But if that works for the finished painting, then, you know, I'll, I'll go with it. Now, what I'm doing here, you can see I'm kind of scumbling the brush into the watercolour marker drawing that I've got here. And that watercolour marker is kind of mixing with the, with the interactive acrylic. And it's allowing me to do some automatic blending, which is working quite well for the actual colour that's there. So it's quite an efficient way to, you know, I, I, I didn't really plan the, the colour the color of the watercolour marker in this case, but, you know, again, it's, it sort of started to work, so I went with it. And it's a nice way to work if you want to. You could sort of think ahead and say, well, you know, which colour of watercolour marker do I want to mix in here?
While I've got this hair colour on the go, I'm going to make use of that on the palette. Mix in some more titanium white into the colour that I had already. I'm going to pick up some more of the ultramarine blue. Grab a touch of the crimson. And a bit more of the blue. And let me just work this into the brush here. What I'm going to do now is use this as sort of a, a light shadow colour on other parts of the shirt. You know, and I want to keep the treatment here reasonably loose. Um, I want the face to be the main focus of this painting. Actually, that's as, as I said that, I thought, well, that's a rather obvious statement. You know, we're doing a, a portrait painting, but it just occurred to me, I don't think I've ever seen anybody paint a portrait where, let's say, they paint the full figure and they meticulously paint the body and the hands and the clothes in you know, high, you know, really sharp focus and then leave the face completely out of focus. And it just occurred to me that might be quite an interesting experiment to do. So so maybe for a, a future video, but not, not for today, not for today. But continuing with that colour scheme, I've just mixed a bit more of the titanium white into the colour I had already mixed up. I'm going to add some more of the, the blue and the crimson. A bit more blue. And that is going to act as the next step down in the shadow colour on the shirt. And while I've got that on the palette, Let's introduce some of that into the hair. So, so as mentioned earlier, when, when you've got somebody with grey hair, there are often quite a lot of subtle colours that the hair, you know, reflects. So when you start looking for those, you start to see purples and blues, and you know, obviously there's going to be some dark areas of grey and things like that. But um, but that's sort of set up a little bit of harmony between the colour top and bottom. Now I've been fairly loose in terms of my treatment of the hair and the shirt, but I want to be a little bit more precise with my treatment of the face. I'm going to take a similar approach though in terms of how I, how I come at it tonally. So as you can see I've mixed some titanium white with a little cad yellow touch of the alizarin crimson and let's see what this looks like as the beginnings of a highlight color so again squinting at my reference there's a there's a bit of a highlight there which is actually brighter than i've painted it now against this orange although although the color looks a little pink or at least it does to me i don't know how it looks on camera on the palette that's almost looking blue which isn't quite what I was expecting, I've got to admit. So I'm going to add a load more titanium white to the mix and see see what happens there. So that's a little better. Um, there's a little burst of highlight down there. And then around the eye that's on our right. There's a highlight there as well. Just scraping some paint off the off the brush. Highlighter there above the eye and also one below. On this side of the nose. Now here, the mixing of the watercolour marker 
with the paint is a bit of a disadvantage so you know it worked quite well on the edge of the hair but not so great now that I come to the nose so so my earlier idea of, of planning ahead with that I, I may you know I may try that in the future and perhaps use an orange marker for the face and then perhaps a the indigo marker for the hair or something like that uh, nevertheless I'll, you know we can keep going um, so I've just added a few highlights around the the nose there a little bit on the mouth or near the mouth I should say both cheeks perhaps a little bit down here on the chin Little bit at the corner of the mouth there and to the le left of the the nose and while I've got this color on my brush I think I'm also, well there's also a little bit of a highlight there and then this brush is too big for this next bit really but I'll, I'll see if I can just do it with the corner a little bit there the corner of the eye there as well and there's even a bit here actually so one of the things you know with using different colors and tones is that something that I put there initially which perhaps looked a little out of place when you uh, provide you know give the painting a, a reasonably even treatment things things sort of become a little more in, keep, in keeping from one part of the painting to the other so you can, you can get away with more I feel a bit here on the on the neck as well okay well we've put some highlights in so next I want to introduce uh, a mid-tone which is you know less bright than the fluorescent orange background that I've got so I'm taking that highlight color that I've already got mixed up bringing in some of the cad yellow and then a little corner on the brush of the alizarin crimson and then let's pop some of that on where I've got midtones occurring so the fluorescent paint is really kind of messing with my colour perception actually because this colour I've mixed up here it looked pretty good on the palette but it looks most odd with the fluorescent kind of coming through so this is an effect you know you can use to your advantage if if for example if you put down a dark purple background or if you had some dark purple paper then putting acrylic on top of that you know it really makes the colours glow it really does um, but uh, my hope for this painting is to get this mid-tone in and then I'm hoping to leave little bursts of the fluorescent orange showing through. I'll put in some background colour in just a moment and then my hope is that the overall effect will be more in keeping with the reality um, but it, it'll be a little bit of a stretched reality you know with these little bursts of colour showing through. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So the, uh, the watercolour marker bled then again, that wasn't particularly advantageous to me, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll take that dark colour which I've created there and I'll use that to put in a little bit of shadow where appropriate. And then I'll come back to my palette in just a moment and go back to that mid-tone. So I can use, so really at the moment I'm just working the indigo watercolour marker that I put down. The, the brush is damp enough to kind of move that around. 
so as I made that little mistake, why not uh, why not make things work for me if I can. Bit of shadow in on the ear here. Now, some of those shadows need to be much more purpley, but we'll get to that uh, in, a, in a bit, as I said. Actually, I could just put a little shadow in there and here under the, under the, the lower lip, middle of the chin. There we go. Right, I'm going to clean my brush. All right, brush is clean. Back with my mid-tone colour as it as originally intended. I'm putting it on fairly thinly. Um, as I said, I want to keep some of this fluorescent orange showing through. So that's working reasonably well. So I want to put in some contrasting. Oh, hang on, I haven't done the, haven't done the ear. There we go. Okay, so I want to put in some contrasting background color to to make the flesh and the hair sing a little bit better. So I'm going to put in a um, a reasonably dark blue along here. Is my thinking. I'm going to put. Uh, I might just leave the, the background colour as it is above the hair and we'll, we'll see how that works. So I've still got this uh, kind of purple colour I used on the shirt if you remember so let's get a goodly amount of the ultramarine blue and mix that into what I've got there already. And I'm going to use this colour as I said to make the, the flesh tone I've got they're already sing a little bit more, but also just to refine the outline that I put down earlier. So just looking carefully at the shape of the head on the left hand side here. And this darker blue is also going to make the, the shoulder of the white shirt look a little brighter as well. So if you want if you want a colour that you've put down on your painting to look different to the way it does, you know, obviously the natural approach or perhaps the most obvious approach is to paint over it in a slightly different colour. But another way to do it is to change the colours that are next to the colour you want to change because there's always this um, back and forth relationship between a patch of colour and its neighbour and how we perceive it. So again I'm keeping as I move away from the, the head you can see I'm putting the paint down very thinly and just kind of scumbling the brush around so some of this uh, orange background is still showing through. And I quite like that effect at the moment. But I think that's both in, both improved the contrast and helped the flesh tone somewhat. 
but I want to make this transition from the blue to the orange a little smoother so because I've got the interactive acrylics I'm just going to spray the paint here with a little bit of water and, a, and just tease out the, the paint I've put down already. So it's a little more of a gradual transition from, from blue to orange compared to what I had before. And I'm going to carry this across the top of the head, as you can see. Being a little bit careful, I don't want to outline the head with my brush marks here. I don't, I don't want to create some kind of accidental halo. A little more water and I'm just going to use what little paint I've got left on the brush to bring that blue down onto the right hand side in a very, very subdued and subtle way. Now the paint here I put down so thinly that you know I'm getting a few little cauliflowers formed even though we're using acrylic and there's a run here uh, when I sprayed the blue earlier and lifted it off there are a few speckles here I quite like that effect so I'm just going to leave that as it is I think adding the blue has improved the way the skin looks but I still want some areas that are a little pinker so I'm grabbing some alizarin crimson going back into that light flesh tone that I had from earlier on bringing a bit of white from the edge of that patch of colour and I'm just going to add this again looking at my reference as always that's not going on quite as smoothly as I would like so I'm just going to spray the paint on the uh, palette and I've also just misted the surface of the portrait as well so I'm just going to introduce this warmer pinker colour and blend that in with what's already there. But I will leave some areas unchanged. I'm still being careful to where you know where I think I can just leave those little bursts of the fluorescent orange showing through because I don't know I think it just gives um, it's such an intense color I think it brings a real energy to the image but uh, you know as I've mentioned a couple of times now I just want it to be there on a fairly minimal level. probably use this same colour for the lips as a first iteration and again got a little bit of auto blending from the watercolour marker which in this in that particular case worked reasonably well So for now I'm going to leave the face, I'm just going to put some colours in on the tie. Now John's tie doesn't really have much of this you know, orange colour that I've used for the background in it, but I'm going to cheat a little bit and deliberately leave a little exposed, um, but we'll come to that in a moment. So I'm not going to try and match the colours of the tie exactly, I just want to get a general impression of the tie. 
So he's got this little segment on the knot in the tie, which is, uh, in my reference, it looks to be kind of a dark greeny brown, but I'm replacing that with pure ultramarine blue. OK, and we'll take that. And even though, again, it isn't quite like this in the reference, I'm just going to put a little triangle of that in there as well. Same colour further down, or at least that's what I'm going to use. Same colour further down. And I'm going to put that in there. So just a little patch of colour there. Now, when I come over to the next bit, as we drop down to the the other end of the tie, which you know, sits behind the, the fatter part. I'm going to do another little block, but I'm deliberately, notice how I've dropped that down a little bit to the right. That helps to create the illusion that we've got a couple of different layers of cloth there. Now there's also a lighter blue, so I'll just grab some titanium white. I could have used some of the background, so I'll pick that up as well. That's not too bad. Ideally, I'd use Silurian blue here or maybe even Cobalt blue. But again, I'm just trying to give the general impression of a tie. Not worried about copying that particular pattern exactly. And again, it's not exactly this way, but I'll put a, pot, I'll put a patch in there. Come down a bit lower and put another patch in as well. We'll come back to more on the tie later, but I want to go back to the, the face now. So I've still got this kind of warm tone that I had from before, but let's pick up a little more Alizarin Crimson. I've switched to my slightly smaller half inch wide brush. I'll grab some ultramarine blue, mix that in with this kind of middle tone that I had there before. Let's get a bit more of the blue on the go. A little bit more and I'm going to start to use this for some of the areas that are in slightly deeper shadows so for example so the lighting's a little odd actually it often is on portrait artist of the week um, it's not you know when I get the impression that when they're set up in the studio um, you know for portrait artist of the year obviously they consider the lighting very carefully I imagine from a both a filming point of view and also from you know, an artistic point of view as well. However, I don't know how it works, but because you know this is being done on the web, presumably the sitter is just asked to sit somewhere in their house where obviously they they need computer access, but hopefully there's reasonably good light. And because of that, sometimes the lighting's uh, less yeah less than desirable. And then you take a screenshot and that's not all that clear either. So you've got to kind of, in a way it's good, in a way it's good because there's no way you can exactly copy the photograph because you don't have enough information. So it encourages you to think a bit more and, and do your own thing a bit more, I, I think. So while I was chatting away there, you can see I'm adding in some darker shadows, eyebrows, left side of the forehead, around the top of the nose here, so another little dark area, a shadow to the right of that nostril, under the tip of the nose. And then we can put some of that in on the ear as well. Now that same colour, I'm going to take my unwashed brush 
I just grabbed some burnt umber and I'm, I'm mixing that in to that same colour. I'm going to use that to add a bit of variation in colour and tone to the eyebrows. And that started the modelling of the face and the look, general look of the face I'm reasonably happy with. I want to come in and do the eyes and the lips now. Now the eyes are you know, very much in shadow and often um, portrait artists of the week, they, uh, they put on Instagram, they say, oh, for those of you who are asking, you know, um, the sitter's eyes are blue or brown or whatever is appropriate. Um, I didn't, couldn't see that, uh, just had a quick look, couldn't see that this week. Um, so what I'm going to do, I think they're blue, as best I can tell. Um, I'm using blue, the ultramarine mixed with white, to just fill in the whites of the eyes here, just to put them in shadow. I'm now taking that same colour and mixing it in with some ultramarine that I had before. I'm going to use that just here on the left side of that iris. Oh, I switched to a little filbert, by the way. Um, and now I'm picking up some pure ultramarine blue and just mixing that in with what little paint I had left on my brush. And using that to fill in the iris on the right and what I haven't done Oh, that's coming out white for some reason. Oh, I obviously picked up a bit of white on the brush by mistake. Um, there we go. Fill in the rest of the iris on the left. And there's not much of a light in the eyes, but I've just taken a little touch of light onto the brush. I just want to put the, sl the slightest highlight in there just to bring the eyes to life a little bit. And then Again, the tiniest amount, less so on this side. There we go. I mean, you might not even be able to see that on camera, but there is a little pin brick of white just there. Next, I'm coming back in with the filbert, but pure ultramarine blue. The line of the lid, the top lid of the left eye, got a little lost earlier. So I'm just correcting that. And similarly on the on the right as well. And this pure blue, I'm actually going to use here and there as a as a shadow colour. Just a few touches to replace the very, very dark shadows that appear under the nose there, on the brows, corner of the mouth, left side of the nose. Right, I'll come back to the face again in just a moment, but let's um, let's jazz up this tie a little bit. Just grabbing some of the cadmium yellow. I'm still using my filbert. Just putting a burst of that there. And then I'm going to do the same colour, but with some titanium white in. And just add a few... licks of that colour as well. There we go, so that's looking a little more lively now. And I think even though it's not there, I'm just going to put a line of that same colour across the knot. Okay, now this same colour I'm going to use 
as a highlight colour. So what I'm doing as I work my way around the painting is I'm looking to see where the bright areas are, but I'm also thinking, well, you know, will my painting as a whole, in, in my humble opinion, look better with a bit of yellow there? So the marks I'm putting down, I am mimicking the shapes of the highlight that I see in the reference, but I'm not, or in general, you know, I'm, I'm not copying. Sorry, I am. Sorry, I am mimicking the shape of the highlights, but what I'm not doing is copying the colour. I was going to do more on the mouth and the eyes, but I'm actually tempted to, to leave that as leave those as they are. What I do need to do is tidy up this shirt a little bit, add some brighter highlights and also some texture in the hair. All right, so I've switched back to my smaller flat and I'm just grabbing some pure titanium white and I'm going to use that to tidy up. The collar here and also the, ch the line of the chin. That doesn't look pure white to me, that looks slightly off white, so let me just check what I've got here. All right, here we go. Cleaner brush, cleaner palette and oh it's not, it's actually, okay, the brush did need a bit of a clean. I definitely went to a cleaner part of the palette and I'm definitely using pure white but a lot of this bluey tint I don't know if that's coming across on camera it's actually just a result of the surrounding colors so uh, that's quite interesting I hadn't actually come across that phenomenon in quite that way before um, nevertheless we'll uh, we'll press on so just want to Make the white of this shirt stand out a little more. And then for the hair, I'm just sort of dragging most of the paint off of my brush. I'm going to use the same pure white. And I'm just doing a little dry brush here on the right hand side of the head to create a suggestion of hair texture. up here as well on the on the parting and you know I, I could keep working this up 
more and more making it more refined but I quite like the raw nature of it so I think I'm going to leave that one there. So here's a closer look at the finished painting. This is the end of week seven of Portrait Artist of the Week season two. Um, if you click on the link in the description below the video then you can zoom in pretty much just like I'm doing now and look at you know, the brushwork in real detail. Just click on different parts of the image once you get to my website and I'm actually working my way towards my thousandth upload uh, of images on my website as well so there's a ton of different subject matters and styles there if you want to check those out too. Anyway thanks very much for watching hope you enjoyed this video please remember to like comment and subscribe and I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thanks again for watching.